welcome to the MTV Coca-Cola Report. All this week we're out on the road with Prince and the new Power Generation. We'll be talking to various band members, showing you some exclusive live performance and the best. We'll be taking you right inside a party that Prince threw especially for our competition winners. It was the first time ever that TV crews were allowed to film at one of those rare after-show gigs. So you see the week is full of surprises, hope you'll stay with us and for the time being here is My Name is Prince, or is it? My name is Prince, My name is Prince. Right, we're backstage now and I'm joined by Jimmy Johnson, the tour manager. Hi, what's your job, I wonder? What do you actually do? Uh, I babysit a lot of fools. No, <laughs> just being kidding. Uh, putting, the, the, putting together the tour, the uh, travel plans, the hotels, the transportation of uh, the band and Prince, and um, looking over all that and taking care of the tickets and things of that nature. How much does it involve putting together a tour like this, money-wise, pressure-wise? Well, you've always got to, every time you try to make a decision, you've always got to worry about whether the artist is going to be happy enough with the hotel you've picked for him or the travel arrangements you've made for him. You know, is it, a, uh, is it the right airline? Is it the right seat on the airplane? Is it the right kind of hotel room? Uh, so you always have those pressures and worries because he'll always come back if he's not happy and go, Why'd you put me in that bad hotel for? Oh my God! How what's how does one get in to tour managing? She's you know that's a question that's been asked asked to me so many times and I uh, I don't know how to just you just fall into it you, uh, you just do the best you possibly can and you, it's 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 basically a networking of of individuals such as people who do what I do and we talk to each other all the time and say hey what do you hear about that's going on and. You know, they kind of turn you on to different things. You turn them on to different things. Well, that should give that should be some good advice for the youngsters <laughs> in Europe. Thanks very much, and we'll catch up with the news headlines from London. Tomorrow, have made a strong protest against what they see as the un. This is the very groovy backstage area, and I'm joined by Martijn van Hees from Holland. Hi. Hi. What's your job on the Prince tour? Well, actually, the, um, I'm a video director. There are screens um, both sides of the stage. And actually, you know, there are a lot of people who are uh, very far away from the stage. So they have the opportunity to look at the screens to see, to see uh, Prince close. But there is also another reason is that uh, Prince wants to see his, his show back because, you know, when he is singing, he cannot see himself. So he, um, uh, when the show is uh, ended, he takes the video uh, to his hotel and maybe he's going to take a shower, I don't know. But uh, he's going to look to the video right away to see, you know, how the lights are, how he moves and to see my mistakes. <laughs> maybe. And then what happens? Does he tell you off or what? Well, not directly actually because, you know, a lot of people want to talk with him. So it's kind of with memos, something like that. If I do something very wrong and I got fired or I get a memo to do something else, mm. do, do that shot different and in that song I want more close-ups or whatever. But I think, you know, the, the band is very close with each other and they know Prince and they practice a lot so they don't make mistakes actually. They know exactly what they're doing. And they, you know, everybody wants to move in their own way so Prince is not going to tell the band how to move, it's especially him and, and, and the lights. All right, well, thank you very much. I think now we've got a video coming up with uh, someone you've worked with, in fact. Oh, really? That is Candy Dolfer. Oh, <laughs> Here we go, Candy Dolfer. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Very funky. All right, and that's about it for today. But we'll be, of course, back on the road with Prince tomorrow. So I hope you'll join us there. And right now, I'm going to leave you with something that, in fact, my friend Martin has produced. Anything to say to that? Yeah, well, it's the beginning of the show and it has to be very good. So everybody watches this, so it has to be very good. Enjoy. This is Prince Sexy MF. We're all alone in the villa on the 58. Some friends on the south side in case you can. I know all your friends who will be the closest. That's why I tell you thanks who will be the most. It's when it comes to life. This man's wife. You got to be well educated on what's up to fight. Huh? I'm in the mansion up. In other words, it's not real meaning of the thing called love. Now you up on this. It's so that you can get a bubble hug and a kiss. Come here, baby. Come in, babe. Yeah. Sing it! Sexy mother.
Hi and welcome to another edition of the Kirk Report. We're still on the road with Prince and the new power generation. Right now hanging out in one of those glamorous huts backstage which uh, are converted into a dressing room together with Michael and Dave uh, from the horn section. Now when you're a tambourine player? No, what are you? Trombone. Trombone <laughs> is difficult, these words in English. And you? I play the trumpet. Trumpet, right. Now what is it like working with Prince? You've been on the road for a while? Well, a couple of months on this leg of the European tour, we also did a U.S. section of the tour. So, with, you know, a good chunk of this year, it's, uh, yeah. it's pretty full of surprises. <laughs> yeah. This is our second time through Europe. We were on the uh, previous European tour also. Yeah. How much input do you actually get in the recording process and songwriting? Well, the songwriting process is, is Prince, and rightly so. <laughs> but uh, when you know when we do this, put the show together, things like that, he he allows some input from the you know writing horn arrangements and stuff, or or he'll just give you some basic ideas, and we kind of go with that, and I'll arrange some things off of that. Yeah. And you're on sort of a standby for 24 hours in Paisley Park. Pretty much, we're yeah. we're. Yeah. Available at any hour the Prince gets an inspiration. And what times is that normally? <laughs> and that can be uh, many times as afternoon rehearsals, but um, if he Middle wants to record, he can call us back in. Uh, w many times we've been there uh, from sundown to sunup. Yeah. <laughs> and on the road it's the same or what? Um, it kind of depends on the situation. If we're in a town for a few days, he might decide to do a club gig. He might decide to record, and uh, he's always thinking of something. <laughs> he doesn't. He doesn't ever really stop. It's Keeps on your toes, I suppose. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> All right, let's yeah. see you guys in action now on video. We've got morning papers. He will ever Now that's definitely something I'm not going to do while I'm here, but we will switch back to some action pack news from London right now and after that I'll be talking to someone who's incredibly sporty and fit and daring too and that's Princess belly dancer Matey. See you there. Here in the dressing room now with Matey who's one of the amazing dancers on the Prince tour. Now first of all I wonder how do you keep fit? I mean you have to go on stage every night, dance. <laughs> You must be incredibly fit. Yeah, well, basically, um, dancing on stage is what keeps us keeps me fit because it's nonstop. I'm dancing nonstop in the concert. Yeah. yeah. And when you're off the road, do you work out every day or something? Yeah, yeah, training for hours. <laughs> Being a dancer, you have to train yeah. every day. Yeah. Now, you've gotten hired for the Diamonds and Pearls tour. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think made you get the job? I can imagine that must have been an incredible competition. Um, it was um, my belly dancing and um, my individuality, the way I dance, it's different and um, I mix ballet with belly dancing and then now hip hop and it's just my style of dancing that nobody does. Brilliant. How did you uh, learn all that? Um, I started at three, dancing. <laughs> yeah, so it's, I grew up doing it. Then you heard that he was auditioning for dancers, or how did it work? No, I gave him a videotape of my uh, dancing. All right. And there was no audition or anything. <laughs> <laughs> you just got hired on the spot. Brilliant. Yeah. Now, who choreographs your dancing now for this show? Um, basically, I do most of it. What I do on, in this show, it's it's me. Now, you are also the main um, star of the Video 7. Mm -hmm. What was it like shooting that video? Oh, it was great. It was <laughs> so much fun. Um, we had uh, 12 girls and 12 boys, and um, I was teaching the girls to dance like me. They were following what I was doing. It was a lot of fun. Excellent. Now, let's see the result. This is 7. <laughs> And we'll be talking to more members of the new power generation tomorrow. Plus, we'll have some exclusive live performance footage of the man himself, 
Don't ask me what his name is. <laughs> I'm gonna chill out now. You tune back in tomorrow. See you there. Hi and welcome to yet another edition of the MTV Coca-Cola Report from backstage on the road with Prince and the New Power Generation. Now Prince and the band have just done their pre-show prayers in this room and right now the press has stormed in and obviously it's a photo call going on and right, well basically any moment they really are going to go on stage and later on we'll be talking a little bit more with a few of the band members but let's see a video. First of all this is Sexy MF. There we saw in the video Levi sees her on lead guitar and here he is now, still backstage in the dressing room. Hello. <laughs> now, you wrote this song together with Prince. Mm -hmm. How did that work? How do you work together with Prince? Oh man, he has a <laughs> lot of different ways. Um, sometimes uh, he'll say, hey, you got some music. Um, and uh, I'll go home and I'll cook up something and bring it back and he'll write some lyrics and put a melody on it. or. Sometimes he may have something and ask me to finish it. So, and sometimes we do it as a you know a whole band, like a sound check where we jam and come up with something and go back home and record it. Yeah, you actually have probably a rather special relationship with him because you've been there for so long. Yes. How many years? Well, it's been uh, about eight years in his band and uh, another three in the PRN organization. I was with Sheila E for a while. All right. Yeah. And has your input changed over the years? Your role in the band? Yeah, it has changed. Um, I'm, I guess I'm the official band leader now, and uh, I, I feel honored to have that position, especially in a band like this, because uh, this is my favorite band. I mean, I think he's taking music to another level, and I'm glad to be a part of that. So he kind of lets me take the ball sometimes and do my thing with it. Right. With the band. Right. <clears throat> now, what do you think of his name change? How do you call him now? Well, I think there's too much hype about <laughs> that. It's, I mean, think of the name change as revolution change. Um, we all have deep feelings about the way the music industry is going. We feel like there's a lot of people in the upper levels who don't really care about the music anymore. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's just units to be sold. So the whole name change is just think of it as ending the old and starting a new decade of music. Right. And we're going to have different ways of putting the stuff out. Uh, we have a play now called uh, Glam Slam Ulysses, and it has like 13 new print songs. And oh, wow. the only way to hear it is to go see the play. Uh -huh. Things like that, you know. Yeah. That's brilliant. But yeah. you still call him Prince? Yeah, sometimes, <laughs> you know. But I mean, it's like when I'm around my mother, I don't call her yeah. mother, you know, <laughs> I don't call her by her first name. We just talk. Yeah, yeah. So I think people should not pay so much attention to that and okay. just listen to the music. Very true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, and we got more news for you guys coming up now, straight from London, the headquarters of MTV. Madonna and her. And I am joined by the winner of our Prince competition recently, and well, you've been hanging out with Prince and everything. What was it like? It was excellent. Yeah. It was a really good weekend. It was really enjoyable. Can't believe what we've done in that. It was really good. Tell us a little bit. You, you actually chatted with him, didn't you? About yeah. Apple pies? <laughs> <laughs> we were invited into his um, dressing room. We had a chat with him for about 10 minutes. But it's all a secret. And what did you... Oh, okay. We don't want to reveal that. <laughs> and then you went dancing on stage with him? Yeah, we uh, watched the concert from the side and then at the end he got us on stage dancing. He was really dancing. That was good. Really fun. <laughs> and then what was the prize that you actually got? The from? prize was the guitar. Custom made guitar, his own guitar that he and yeah. has used. Wow, that was pretty cool. And he even gave you the pick, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Stopped Tonight. the concert for a little bit, <laughs> gave you the pick and went back on. Excellent, so let's just have a look. Black 
beautiful guitars in here. Thanks for being a fan of the new power generation. Thank you. Welcome to Thursday's edition of the Kirk Report, still from the road, backstage with Prince and the band. And now we've moved to the wardrobe department, where I find Leanne, who's in charge of special projects and the tour. And I want to know, what exactly does that entail? What does it mean? That means I and the crew in the wardrobe department take care of all these clothes for the 13 people that appear on the stage in the concerts. Right. Um, how, who decides who's going to wear what in which show? Is it always the same? It generally becomes the same. Initially, Prince may have a few changes, but at this point it's basically the same and he decides what's going to be worn. But he wears something different every night, doesn't he? He wears Maybe. four different things, usually, yeah. if not more. Right, and these four different things are the same four different things every night? Yeah, generally speaking. <laughs> He's, right. He likes to change his mind, but after a while in the concert tours, things generally find a pattern. Right, so why don't you show us some of these wonderful costumes? Certainly. For instance, this is a show costume that Prince wears. This is a red coin suit, and it's a duplicate of the yellow one that is featured in the Seven video. And it's got some coins here and on the sleeves. Who designs that, for example? This Who comes one, up with these ideas? This one was designed by a Minneapolis native, Stacia Lang. Mm -hmm. And with this, he wears a mask, which is like in seven, only this one's red. How does one get to draw like this? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Be at the right place at the right time. <laughs> I got lucky. I started over six years ago, and my initial job was for six weeks. So it's been nearly seven years and I'm still here. Excellent. <laughs> Good luck further on. Thank you very much. We're going to see some music now. This is Diamonds and Pearls. Guess who I met backstage, lurking around as if nothing were better to do. <laughs> no, I don't actually. <laughs> John Taylor, are you a Prince fan? Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's why you're That's here. not why I'm here, no, actually. <laughs> so why are you here? Well, we've just been playing it. We, we played at this right. show and we're going to be doing some, uh, I think we're doing three more shows with, with him. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Around Europe. Have you met him as yet? No, I never have. No, no. Well, there's still hope. <laughs> and what are your own plans for the future? Well, we're going to, we're touring, we're going to be on tour in Europe for the next four weeks and then we go back to America. And, uh, we're touring there till Christmas. We went to Japan before Christmas, I think, as well. You're doing quite well. Are you happy with the new album? Yeah, yeah, it's great because it's selling and people are buying it and liking it and then they're coming to the shows. We haven't had that happen ooh, since ooh. the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. How do you like uh, living in LA now? Well, I like it a lot because we don't have a lot of time off on this tour, so if you do get a couple of days off, it's nice to go somewhere where you can sit by the swimming pool, you know. <laughs> sure, all right. Well, thank you very much for quickly joining us here. Happy, happy. And right now we are at a meet and greet event where band members of the new power generation meet some certain winners and uh, important people from the sponsors, stuff like that. And it's all happening just before they go on stage. I wonder how they can still have all the concentration but then again they're all professionals anyway let's catch up right now with the news from london see you after that evan dan joined by the production manager of the prince tour 
Charlie Hernandez, welcome. Hi. How does one get a job like yours? Well, you come home one day and you break mom and dad's heart. <laughs> hmm, okay, and what do you do on your job? <laughs> yeah, I'm leaving school. Anyway, um, I'm in charge of all the, um, the logistics and moving this production around with my crew and putting it up and taking it out and interfacing with local labor and local sound companies, lighting companies and things like that. In the festival situation, in our touring situation, then I'm in charge of our own lights and sound and things like that and moving it from place to place and um, basically doing the impossible. <laughs> <laughs> Making sure everything goes right. Yeah. Now what are the problems you come across? Ah, oh, no problems. <laughs> no, we're professionals. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no. Uh, problems oh, sometimes it might rain in an outdoor show or sometimes you know little things but we're we're pretty well set to conquer any of those you know how long does it take to put up stage like that uh, what, in your stage touring like this, no or? in your touring situation um, we'll normally start around 8 in the morning and we're done around 4 for a sound check and then uh, he'll walk in and we'll do a sound check for a couple of hours and open the doors Right. Okay. And what do you enjoy best about your job? Ah, the people. So it must be pretty tough being in charge of everything, basically. Yeah, but I have I have a really good crew. I have people that work very, very hard, and that makes it a lot easier to deal with. And I've got no, I, you know, it's all it's all down to the crew and the people that work for us. You know, everybody does a great job, and you know, we'll do all these things, and <laughs> it's not that bad. It's great. We have a good time. Brilliant. That's yeah. what it's all about. Yeah. Thank you very much nice for telling us everything and now we're going to see some music <laughs> he's not going to stay around for this but we are this is martika <laughs> That's it for today. Tomorrow we'll be going to that exclusive after show gig, so you better not miss that show. And right now, here's Prince live with the beautiful ones. Enjoy. See ya. Coca-Cola report from the Prince Tour. We are actually inside the most exclusive party tonight, the Prince After Show gig. No TV crew has ever been allowed to film an event like this and we'll be seeing him up close a little bit later on. Right now, let's get the party going. This is 1999. <laughs> Yes, we are yet again somewhere backstage. This is at a very last minute gig, an after show party, so to say, which is very special. We're all looking forward to it. Now, how does the band feel about it? You just found out as well, didn't you? Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> we always uh, kind of are prepared. We're prepared to do things like this because we do a lot of it on the road, you know, a lot of extra extracurricular activity. The one thing you're good, one quality you got to have, you work with you've got to be flexible. Absolutely. You have to be really flexible. <laughs> Do you already know what sort of songs you'll be playing? No, to be honest, I don't have a clue what we're going to play tonight. I really don't. It could be just improvisational from note one, or it could be any number of things that we've been, you know, like rehearsing and, you know, just like... <laughs> it could be anything. It could be prepared or unprepared. It could be anything. I wouldn't even like... <laughs> well, that's good. It's a surprise for all of us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Surprise for all of us. Can I ask you, how many numbers have you actually rehearsed for this tour? Hundreds? <laughs> oh, I mean, we... Uh, I wouldn't say hundreds. I'd say maybe 60 or 70. <laughs> 
60 or 70. You all know by heart and you can all play. You could play like that. We know more than that, but I mean, for this tour, this year, I mean, we kind of had a guideline to go by about what to expect to, be, to see on the list. But I mean, I mean, if you're asking how many we know, it's into the hundreds, so I mean. Yeah. I'm stunned. <laughs> Let's quickly go back to London and catch up with the news. <laughs> it's right before the band and Prince are going to go on for their after show gig. How do they actually come about? Why is this always happening? It must be quite a lot of strain for you guys to only sleep three hours every day. Well, well we sleep a little longer than that. Um, all we're trying to do is uh, show the public that, you know, we care about them and that, you know, music is number one in our lives. It's not all about the lights all the time and the big production. It's that we love to play and sometimes we're tired, but, you know, we want to still bring the music to them. Yeah, because for the people it's great, of course, it's such an intimate after show concert. I hope that they like it, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to it. Now, since you are the lead guitarist, I meant to ask you, which is Prince's favorite um, instrument, actually? Actually, um, the last, uh, over the course of the last year, it's been guitar, but I, I'd say it's between the piano and the guitar. I mean, he does a lot of writing on piano, but lately, you know, he's been doing the rock thing, so, and, and I'm glad, a lot of people's happy that he's back on guitar. Right? And why does he always have his guitars custom made? Always, actually, he's had that guitar for a long time. It's the same guitar in Purple Rain. We just changed the color. Really? The, you know, every year we have a color, you know, uh, this year is back to purple, last year was yellow. Uh, the guitar was blue at one time, and it was black one year, and peach one year. And what what else is special about this guitar, besides the color? <laughs> um, I think what's special is that he's played it. It's, you know, it's his signature. It's not a guitar that someone else designed. I mean, he designed it himself, you know, so. All right, yeah. so the true secrets of the trades we won't yeah. reveal in right. show. Sure. Thank you okay. very much. You're welcome. We're going to see some more Prince music, Peach, <laughs> and see you later. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> well, we had a brilliant time at the Prince After Show Party and I'm just going to leave you now with the man himself like you've never seen him before. And I'll see you again back in the studio next week. Bye. <laughs> We all bones when we're dead, damn it. Space, space, I'm all human.